So a lot of people don't realize we live on planet ocean. 71% of the planet is water. The largest mediating force on the planet for climate, for the air that we breathe, for the species that we eat, are our oceans. And the bad news is the oceans are downhill from everything. So ultimately, it all washes down into the oceans. And I think humanity's future is in our oceans. So there's a real challenge here, but I'm a member of a group of people that see every challenge as an opportunity. My name is uh, Dr. Ian Kerr. I'm the CEO of Ocean Alliance. And Ocean Alliance was founded by a gentleman called Dr. Roger Payne in 1971. And one of the uh, primary things that Dr. Payne did at the time as a whale biologist was try to develop what we call benign research techniques. These are techniques that prove you don't have to kill whales. A major threat at the time to whales was commercial whaling. So what's happening now uh, with collaborations with, with uh, Cap Inc. And, and other companies is we're now taking that to the next level with reference to technology and innovation. So what we're trying to do at its most fundamental level is, is get sort of baseline, understandable data that we can present to educators, lobbyists, politicians, so we can sustainably sort of harvest this, this, this bountiful ocean on, on sort of planet ocean, if you like. As we're looking at whales, you know, and we want to understand whales, the reality is we need physical, biological data. If you're sick, what do you do? You go to the doctor and he gets a syringe and he takes some blood and they analyze it. I, I defy you to go up to a whale with a big syringe and say, I want some blood. It's not going to work. So how do we get this physical data? What's wonderful with whales is whales are what they call explosive breathers. They, they blow out very fast. A dolphin can exhale and inhale in half a second. Because whales are explosive breathers, they're very good because they're blowing up all this stuff. And in our lungs, uh, we actually have a little lubricant on the tissue because what happens is our lungs are expanding and contracting and expanding and contracting and tissues rubbing up against each other. If you didn't have that lubricant, it would wear away. So when a whale explosively breathes, it's blowing out some of this lubricant, it's blowing out some of the phlegm, you know what I mean? Some of the snot, and this really is a biological treasure trove. Snotbot is this tool to get this biological data. I have always been a hobbyist. I've always enjoyed making things, breaking things, taking things apart, seeing how things work. And about six years ago, I thought, wow, we could use these drones. Hundreds of millions of dollars have been invested into the drone field. So now we don't have to build the drone that will automatically come back to me, will automatically know how high it is, range, distance, bearing, speed, battery capacity. They're doing that for me. So all we have to do is build the little machines that we can then attach to these drones. And this is where a company like Capping comes in because you can't go down to Home Depot and say, I need something to attach a FLIR camera to a drone that is lightweight, adaptable, and adjustable. So the capacity for us to even build prototypes of what we think we need, or actually build the real thing, it is very exciting. The unit that we have that Cap Inc have been sorting us with has been a MakerBot, which I must say has been a lot of fun. And I think as an entry level machine, it's worked very well for us. I will admit we've done our prototyping with the MakerBot and then we've gone to a next level machine to do the final products. There's nothing better than this entry level machine. You, you don't want to be going out spending 10,000, 15,000, 8,000, whatever it is, and then saying, this is not the technology for us. Certainly I and the students in my robotics lab are hooked. You know, we love it and we would probably spend more time playing around than we should be doing our work. But again, I think there's a fascinating crossover there as we call experiential learning. As an example of, of how Cap Inc has supported our work, one thing we created uh, with the students at Olin College was a thing we called Snot Shot. And this was a little potato gun that basically shot liquid, but we wanted to make a blowhole. A lot of people don't realize many different species of whales have different blowholes. They have V blows for like a right whale, and they have blow that blows to the right for a sperm whale. Here we have an example 
of a 3D printed blowhole. And forgive the little mesh in there, but the mesh then atomizes the spray, and you can see the V here of the blow pattern. Again, it may sound simple, but will this technology work? You've got to beta test it before you go into the field. So the capacity to make our own blowholes is a big deal. Another one here, we were mounting our engines on the drones and the, and the engines are blowing straight down. Well, we're trying to catch the whale blow that is blowing straight up. So we said, okay, why don't we just angle up the engine mounts? Well, there we go. So here was our regular engine mount that's 3D printed. And then with SolidWorks, it's quite simple then to just drag this corner up and now we've got an angled mount. I mean. How long would that have taken you in years past to sort of, and, and again, all of them want to be the same. So if you're making them out of metal, you're measuring and are they the same? Where, where, you know, on SolidWorks, you basically drag this up five degrees and then say print for them. So after about five years of talking about SnotBot, last fall, we took the SnotBot to Patagonia, which was terrifying because it's actually much easier to talk about it than it is to do it. It, it worked very well. I mean. A lot of design is based on common sense, and common sense said it would work, but until you've done it, you don't know. And, and honestly, we got incredible data down there. We got incredible photographs, we got incredible video footage, and we got snot samples. It was actually funny though, because we, we hang a Petri dish underneath the snot bot, and the first time we came back, there was as much snot on the back of the Petri dish as there was on the bottom. And we realized the snot that missed was going up, was getting hit by the blow and pushing down. So the next time we went out, we had a dish pointing down and a dish pointing up. And then by the time we finished the expedition, we had two dishes up and two dishes down and actually angled a couple of them. So what is interesting about SnotBot, SnotBot in the process of collecting snot is still being developed. I mean, we have 50 or 60 flights with whales. This is nothing. So we are still developing the tool. But um, the future is very exciting. So I, I like to think of Ocean Alliance as an ocean innovator. And I sometimes joke with my friends. I say, we're not on the cutting edge, we're on the bleeding edge. Do you know what I mean? Because it's tough to be an innovator and often it's tough to express an idea or realize an idea and test an idea. It can be very expensive. And this is where I think 3D printing is changing the world. I really believe in the future of these types of tools, tools that are cheap, affordable, replicable, scalable. And I hope that Ocean Alliance will be doing a minimum of three snotbot expeditions a year for the next three years. I don't have all the money for that, but that's where we're going. We do have funding that came from Kickstarter for two more expeditions. So we are doing an expedition to the Sea of Cortez, and we're hoping to work with sperm whales, blue whales, gray whales, and maybe humpback whales. And then we're doing an expedition in the summer to Alaska, which will be primarily humpback whales. I think what's interesting here and what's a challenge for us is good scientific data is all about context. So you need to be able to put the data you collect into context. But as with the toxicology data set that Ocean Alliance has working all over the world, when the Gulf oil spill happened, we were able to put that spill into a biological context with other regions geographically and other points time-wise. We're very excited about the Sea of Cortez and Alaska, and hopefully with the support of, of our friends out there, we can keep this, this innovation moving forward. Enormous thank yous to Cap Inc. Thank you to the staff here at Ocean Lions, the students, the kids at Olin College that have brought us to this point. And thank you to all of you for listening. And I hope all of you will become a part of this family. Let's keep this blue planet blue.